So today, me and Alex are gonna install some coilovers on the Celica. Um, they finally came in, so yeah, it's gonna be cool. Oh yeah, also, we've never installed coilovers before. Uh, so here is the box of coilovers. As you can see, it went with BC Racing, custom coilovers, custom build. So I went with 5K in the front, 8K in the rear. That's the, the recommended uh, spring rate from BC. So I just went with the default. Um, oh, and these are custom because I went with the extreme lows. So the extreme lows are considered a custom coilover. So I'm a little sick today. Got a little runny nose, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and open it. Oops. Ooh. Comes with uh, let's see what's in here. So yeah, this is the went with BR series, extreme low, BC Racing standard. Boring. Ooh, give us two stickers. Oh, cool. And a little pamphlet. Just kind of shows what each. Kind of coilovers, so mine are the BR series, and I guess these ones are like the more advanced and expensive ones. Alright, and the coils are right under. Ooh, this one and this one. So smaller ones are the ones for the rear. And these two are gonna be the ones for the front. I'm guessing these are camera plates. I don't even know. I know these are the dampeners or a stiffer or softer ride quality. All right, about to install them for the first time ever. What's this? Uh, yeah, clearly, I don't know my car uh, stuff. One. So I just picked up Alex from Home Depot. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So we forgot to take off the wheel before raising it up, but you know us, we do everything the hard way. I've never installed coilovers, so just don't want to do anything wrong. You don't want to mess with the preload because apparently the preload is something that's like a hassle to deal with if you mess it up. All right, so after some thorough research, um, I know it says on the thing, but like, I don't know, I was just kind of confused. So basically this is the locking collar. Um, so in order to adjust the ride height, you need to spin these. But in order to spin these, you have to loosen this. You have to unlock it so these can spin. The bottom collar uh, is used to raise the car and the upper collar is used to lower the car. But to raise it, you have to turn this counterclockwise to raise the car. So turn it this way um, and to lower it, you use the top collar and you turn it clockwise when you want to raise the car always use the lower collar never raise the car by using the top collar and going counterclockwise because that will just um, mess with the, uh, with the preload and uh, yeah preloads a hassle to deal with to raise it use this to lower it use the top and um, I hope that was clear so to remove the whole shock and spring assembly the oem shocks there's this bolt that we have to take off um these two over here these two as well so four two on each side that's five total so this is going to be a 14 bolt i believe uh these two are 17 millimeters as well as these two over here so four 17s and the brake line bolt, uh, the brake line bracket, that bolt is a 14 as well. So six bolts in total. And then once you get those done, there are three bolts up here that hold the shocks on top, the top hats. So these are tens, but we're gonna remove them after just so, you know, when we take off the bottom ones, uh, the shocks don't just fall straight down. So yeah, let's get to it. Yeah, we're not good. Okay, never mind. It is not a 17 <laughs> volt. 
Bro, but the form said it was 17. All right, so these are actually 19s, not 17s. We'll see how much we get done today. I bet it's gonna be dark soon before we even take this one out, but gotta do what you gotta do, right? And I still put the 17 on. Let me break this one. Oh my gosh. Rookie mistake for the third time. Oh my. Oh, amateurs. Where'd the 19 go? All right, we're back on schedule. Let's do this. Oh, okay, so. Just unbolt the ones on the left. Those are nuts. And then the ones on the right are gonna be bolts. I'm probably really bad with instructions. <laughs> so. Just got those out. Grab your 14 and unbolt this. I don't even know, what is this called? Is this the tie rod too? Dude, I have no idea what that is. Yeah, we don't know our terms, so, or anything. We don't know anything in general, so. <laughs> All right, that's the 14 right there. And then now we're gonna remove the brake line bracket, just right here. So now all the bolts are detached from the strut. There's another bolt right there. So this is a 10. Anyways, so, oh, just kidding. There's no one. All right, recap. One 14 mil bolt right here, two 19 mil bolts right here, and then these are nuts right here, and these two bolts will just slide out. The brake line bracket, the one that's holding this, is a 14 as well. And then there's another one that's behind this that holds the other brake line. Are there two brake lines? I don't know. I don't know anything. So now one's a 10. So once you take those out. So now all that's left that's holding the shock up are the three bolts that are up here. So these three bolts are what's left and these are 12 millimeter bolts. Excuse the engine bay. You still haven't cleaned it. But that's cool art on it. And the last bolt. And there we go. But yeah, so here's the OEM strut. Give a little comparison. That's a huge difference. Now we're just gonna put this bad boy in. So uh, it's getting dark, so we brought out a little shop light. Everything in reverse order. So we'll put this through the top. It'd be nice if, uh, you know, you had someone hold it up there. Why? Uh, Want me to go ask for help? <laughs> I'm gonna ask your neighbor for help. Yeah. Edgar, you have to take the bolts off, you fucking ding dong. Oh shit. <laughs> oh man. It's always so much more fun when we have two people. Don't forget, they come with their own bolts. So yeah, these come with their own bolts. So you don't have to reuse the OEM bolts. I'm just gonna put them through. This will definitely be easier with two people. Oh, also, since these are the extreme lows, um, these actually came with some spare tie rods. So the one in the back should be a 14 as well. So there's another bolt back there that connects the bottom half of the tie rod. Shout out to the light, man. Wow, look at the sky, everybody. If you have a sky where you're at, <laughs> comment down below and give this video a big thumbs up. Oh, we're still here. Okay. Dude, it's a ball joint. The ball joint could be popped so it just keeps spinning. It's probably spinning on the inside too. So you have to hold it with some pliers on one side. Or just keep spinning it until infinity and beyond. These ones came with their own bolts too, so uh, you don't have to reuse the factory ones. Just gonna put this through right there and then have the other bolt and put it on. Just make sure you don't cross thread it. What the hell? Bro, it doesn't reach. Does the sway bar go up? I don't know. Does it go up? I'm pretty sure it does. I think we have to take off the other side though. For both of them to move. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think we have to take off the other side because that side is connected to the other side. And since the other tie rod is still connected. So that's supposed to go down there and connect up here. But it's a little too short and we believe that the sway bar right here is uh, what's kind of causing it. 
to not be able to reach up there. So we're gonna go on the other side, unbolt the tie rod on the other side and see if it'll let us move it. So now the last steps are to get these bolts in um, and then the brake, brake line brackets in. Um, and so this is super heavy and hard to line up. So we're gonna use a jack and jack it up from the bottom over here. What do you call the bottom over here? Uh, where like the lower ball joints at? Yeah, I know. Or where the lower control arms at? So down here, that's where we're gonna put the jack. All right, so just jack it up until the holes line up. So these bolts should be able to just slide right in, like so, like that. Remember, wiggle it back and forth towards you. Oh, there we go. All right. So these two bolts are kind of hard to wiggle in, but just adjust the jack and make sure the holes line up and it should slip in um, with ease. Yeah, now we'll just put these 19 mil bolts on. And then we're gonna get two wrenches and we'll just have this end, uh, we'll have this wrench hold it and then we'll tighten up this one. So grab a 19 mil wrench, um, this case, to three fourths, so it's the same thing. And just have it, hold it in place on this one and go ahead and just tie in. And do the same on the bottom bolt. The brake line bracket over here. So the bracket, put, put the old bolt back in. And then for this bracket right here, so on the stock coilovers, uh, they have like these, um, what would you call them? I guess like nuts that are just kind of welded onto it. But since on the on the BCs, the second one is not there. So we're just gonna grab a zip tie and we're just gonna zip tie this bracket onto this hole right there. Let's cut that off. So we're gonna have to tighten these bolts on top, but uh, to make sure that they are in all the way. We're just gonna raise the jacks, or the jack a little higher. The spring's gonna compress, so we're just gonna go ahead and tighten these down. And this, but that's basically it. So now we're just gonna put the wheels back on, and yeah, I guess we're just gonna call it a night here. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow during the day, and we'll show you guys how it looks, um, and we'll do the rears as well. Uh, maybe get the the height adjusted as well. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. So it's day two on the coilover install. We found out that uh, we installed the fronts a little off. Um, show you guys real quick. So here, uh, we didn't realize that the top hats were slanted. Um, they're actually supposed to be pointed like this, horizontal, if you're standing from here so these dampener adjustments are supposed to be horizontal and so we're just gonna quickly redo it I feel like an idiot too because it literally shows us how it's supposed to be on the freaking manual see look oh man we just adjusted the top hats uh, we basically just had to kind of like redo the whole strut and uh, twist the top hats around so yeah, so now that they're horizontal, um, they're, they are now a-okay. Okay, so in order to install the rears, we're gonna have to remove all the plastics in the trunk so we could get to the top hats for the rear coilovers. Now we have to remove this carpet right here. Remove this screw and the other screw on this side. So now we're just gonna go down here and remove the, we're gonna go over here and remove this bolt this bolt uh, and I'm gonna have to get this screw and then well I don't care about this clip so I guess I'm just gonna break with it uh, but this whole thing just pulls up okay so I guess the clip didn't break but so this you just go up there we go now in order to get to this piece going to... what in the fuck they added a blanket in here yeah, this is actually disgusting, but... So I just found his, uh, his girlfriend's panties. So there are also two clips that are holding this piece right here. Uh, and we'll just take that off. 
So I guess we have to take this this part, this tray out first. So I guess it's just held in by a bunch of clips. Uh, so the, this tray, I guess there's no, yeah, you can literally just pull them out. They're just held by two clips. Now we can pull this one off, this whole side piece. So there's that. Then we're gonna go over to the other side. And I think for the other side, we're gonna have to um, disconnect the light here. It just unplugged itself, but yeah. So this is the plug that goes into the trunk light. Yeah, I just unplugged itself. So just pull on that. So now we have the gutted interior. Um, and the reason why we need to remove the interior plastics is because we need to get to these two bolts and one behind it. So three bolts in total that holds the rear coilovers together. Let's get started. So for the rears, I believe the only bolt that we need to get is this one right here. So this lone one. So take off this nut and on the other end is a bolt that should just be able to come out. Um, so we'll take that out and we'll see how it goes. So the bolt, the nut that's under there is a 19. So we're gonna go ahead and unbolt that real quick quick update we couldn't take this nut off because it was really stubborn so we went on the other end and it's we went ahead and put the socket on this one and it seems to be more friendly than the other side we finally got that bolt out so now we're just gonna go into the inside and get the three bolts that are on top so we're back inside the hatch or the trunk so these three nuts bolts nuts nuts yeah they are 14s so i'm just gonna go ahead and break them loose there you go. so the coil just dropped on the other end you just kind of put them to the side angle it out and it just slide right out. The difference with the rears is, so unlike the fronts, this whole thing won't just fall down. So I just wiggle it out. Should be really easy. Like I said, if I can do it, anyone can do it. And now we just put the new ones in. So the new ones should be really self-explanatory. Oh yeah, don't forget to get the, take off the bolts that it came with. Dude, I'm always getting nuts and bolts confused. Or nuts, nuts and, nuts nuts and nuts, bolts right? mixed up. Yeah, these are nuts. So, these two in the back, and this Where one in the front. On this side? So, R is for right, okay. in case you didn't know. So let's just do a quick comparison. Here's the BCs, and here's the stock ones. So, you can see they are a lot shorter, so they should be a lot easier to fit in. I'm not lowering it or uh, raising it or anything, but you can spin the shocks. Um, so, make sure it's lined up like this. So the top is like this and make sure the bottom over here is around something like this. Yeah, so kind of like that. I'm gonna go ahead and put the nuts on top first just to have it held in place. So now that the nuts are kind of just holding it up for now, uh, we're gonna go ahead and line this bottom part so you can just literally spin the whole rut and uh, line it up at the bottom and then grab your jack put it right underneath it and raise it up keep raising it until the holes are lined up I'll just guide the bolt through. Okay. I guess you do have to just screw it in. All right, now that that bolt's in, I mean, yeah, bolt. I'm gonna grab this nut and just put it on the other end. For the bolt and nut, I'd suggest having two of them on each side uh just have one end 
uh, held there and then the other end just tighten it because um, if you just tighten one side, the bolt is just gonna keep spinning and spinning and it's not gonna go anywhere. So just have it held in, in position uh, and then just tighten the bolt or the nut on the other end. It should be good to go. And then we're gonna go ahead and tighten the top nuts. And then we'll do the other side, which is gonna be the same thing. We're gonna put the wheels back on and it's already nighttime and it's already dark. So we'll show you tomorrow once it's bright with the wheels on and after we let the coilover settle in. So yeah, see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. So this is what the car looks like now in the daylight. Uh, we've given not quite 24 hours yet, but here's how it looks like. We didn't adjust the coilovers or anything. This is how it is, how it came from uh, BC. So as you can see, it's a little too low. I could barely put my fingers through here. I have to like go up and sideways. Um, so the rears are way lower than the fronts. We're gonna maybe raise the rears by like one inch maybe. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. Here's the fronts. The fronts are fine for now. Maybe half an inch lower, I don't know. Yeah, so we're just gonna adjust it and see what happens.